from the Holistic Education and Development Center, otherwise known as HEADSET. And we, um, whatever way to spend our summer vacation, then to um, present our study on the abundance and distribution of the buffalo marinos and the Dindonectus macrocephalus in a freshwater mountain stream in Tai Tai Rizal. So this is what I'll be covering um, for today. While you go through it, I would like to introduce my roommates. First is Isabella Fernandez, please stand up. So, um, the Tongtong River is a river our school adopted. It's um, located in Tai Tai Rizal. And in 2007, the Tongtong River Conservation Project was formed. Um, this group is basically, uh, it makes up of uh, some teachers, some alumni, some current students of Hedson, and just recently we've gotten new volunteers such as some undergraduates from UP Diliman, some professors, uh, WWF has volunteered, as well as some Starbucks employees, um, and some schools around the area. So the river is about 15 kilometers long, and it flows from the um, Tai Tai Rizal all the way to the Mangahan floodway. So why are we studying frogs? First of all, um, we would like to assess the species richness in the river, as well as we would like to estimate the population of the Buffo Marinos and the Linonectus macrocephalus in the river. Uh, what is the importance of doing this study? First of all, one of our subject species, the Limonectus macrocephalus, or the fan frog, is indeed, uh, it's not endangered, it's a near threatened species, and it is also endemic to Luzon, meaning it's not found anywhere else, just in Luzon. And also because we are the first CRCP volunteers to study frogs in the river, which means our study serves as a baseline for future studies that can happen in the river. So the fan frog, as you can see, its color um, varies from like a dark brown to a grayish tint. Uh, it's really hard to catch because um, first it it blends well with its environment, and when you go out to the field, you see the frog, you try to catch it. It pr it produces mucus on command. So as soon as you get the frog, it just slips out, and we have to chase for it. However. <laughs> Um, it has a red eye shine rather than the usual white, so uh, that helps us locate them easily. Uh, um, it also jumps really far. It can jump up to a, a meter um, per leap, but it can jump like two meters also. Um, so there. I'd like to talk more about the over-harvesting of this frog when its decline causes. Um, some poachers come to the river with electric rods and they go electrofishing. This is where they just stick the rods into bushes and kill off whatever's in the bush. They're, um, this is what they're looking for. They look for the fan frog because it's known to have meaty legs and they eat this. And it's also known to be high um, in protein. So that's one of the decline process. And the fact, the fang frog has fangs, no surprise there. So, <laughs> those are the fangs, you can see them in the picture. Um, the buffalo marinos has a really rough exterior. It also has poison sacs, which can be found behind the tympanium of the frog. It is first introduced as a biological control agent, but when this was proven unsuccessful, uh, it just became known to be a pest species. Uh, this is a picture of us in the field. Um, here we are collecting data. Um, that's me and my group mates. So what do we do down the river? The first thing we did was we conducted a species survey. And we found there to be four other species of frogs in the river. Not, it's not counting the fan frog and the toad. Uh, so how do we go about our, our field work? We go down to the river at a specific time, usually 8 
p.m. Since this event, the frogs come out to feed, and we stay there for um, two to three hours, depending on the pre-agreed area. And we make use of the dama method, which, in other words, means we see a frog, you catch it by all means, and the marker capture method, where we cut off the rightmost toe of the right hind leg of the frog, so we can estimate the population of the frogs in the river. We also um, preserve some frogs for voucher specimens. Among the other species surveyed, um, we have the Tsubuzai Galevit, or the common puddle frog. We have the Polypidates newcomstats, or the tree frog. We have the Ranarithria, or the green paddy. And the Kalula pulchra, or the Asian painted frog. So um, you can find the river in Beverly Hills of the Mission in Taitai Rizal. That's around our, that's the area of Usadi, it's around three kilometers um, long. So uh, this is, if this is, if this is the seventh half of our subdivision, of the Hills, this is the preschool area for school, and this is the outline of the river. So we, we um, divided uh, the river into four sampling areas. Um, there's the first sampling area, the second, the third, and the fourth. Uh, the red dots represent where we found the fan frogs in the river. So in the first sampling area, we found four. In the second, we found five. In the third, we found two. And in the fourth, we found three, which totals 14 fan frogs throughout our survey. And, and though it's a good sign that we see there are fan frogs throughout the stretch of the river, the numbers are alarming if, when we compare them to the Bafo Marinos, which has an estimated population of 3,422 frogs in the toads in the river. Um, so that means for every 1,711 toads in the river, we have only seven fan frogs. However, this isn't accurate since we haven't recaptured any fan frogs, so there could be more. <laughs> 